Hi folks, it's Evo here from Thunamis Lure Company. So glad to see you. Welcome to today's episode of Thunamis Fishy Tips. I'm out here fishing the mouth of the Niagara River, Lake Ontario. Um, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous September day. Actually, it's abnormally hot. And um, the fishing, well, we're gonna find out how it is today. It might be a bit slow, I don't know. So as a result, I did bring some worms with me today. And what I'm gonna do today, folks, I'm gonna run the sting nose uh, jigging spoon and I'm gonna tip it with a piece of night crawler, just a little piece. And people ask me all the time, do you have to tip your, your jigging spoons? And well, you don't necessarily have to, but uh, sometimes if you wanna add a little bit of extra scent, um, that natural scent is quite nice. And you could do so with a little piece of worm, or when I'm ice fishing with the sting nose, I like to add a little piece of minnow um, if you wanna tip it, but you don't necessarily have to. You can fish them just the way they are without any uh, added bait. But today I'm gonna try it since I have the worms. Now I'm down in, I'm 50, 50 feet right now. It's gonna come up. So because I'm in 50 feet of water right now, I'm gonna drop the sting nose right now and straight down as we're drifting out in this current. And I'm gonna jig it just straight up and down. When I get up into the 20 foot zone, I'm gonna try casting it out and then jig jigging it back. So right now I'm on the bottom and all I'm gonna do is just jig it up, let it flutter down. Jig it up, let it flutter down. Pause for a second or two and just work my way back. And then as I come up on that 20 foot zone, I'm gonna bring it in and, oh, there's actually, there's a fish right there. There's a fish right there, folks. <laughs> what I was gonna say is, when I come up there, I'm gonna use the casting method. I'm gonna cast it out and bring it in. This feels like a, a smallmouth bass. It feels like a bass, but could be a sheephead, could be a walleye. That's the thing today, folks. I don't know what I'm gonna get uh, because <laughs> it's, it's that time of year and you're not gonna believe this. I can't believe it myself, what I got on this jigging spoon. I got a channel cat. <laughs> you can imagine, look at this, folks. <laughs> look at this, you can't, can, come on. Really? I'm not even ready with my net yet. And this channel cat has just figured out that he's in trouble. He's just figured it out and I'm running 10 pound. I got 10 pound braided line here with a, with a 12 pound fluorocarbon leader that I'm running today. And I can't believe that fish. He came out of a boat. Well, it's about 40 feet of water when he hit. Look at this. <laughs> now, now, would he have hit the sting nose without the worm? Did he hit it because of the worm? I don't know. But what a start to my day right now because I'm out here today not really targeting any fish. I'm just going to come out here and jig with the sting nose. It's a multi species, any jigging, a jigging spoon, regardless of the jigging spoon you're using. All jigging spoons are, are intended to imitate an injured bait fish. And when you're using something that's intended to imitate an injured bait fish, you got the possibility to catch a, a variety of fish, fresh water or salt water. This is a nice channel cat, folks. Like a nice one. <laughs> He's a good fish. Oh, look at this. Oh, that's a big fish, folks. We're gonna weigh this one. He's pretty heavy and he's thick. I can't believe it. I mean, he's over 10. He's definitely over 10 pounds, I'll tell you that. But he's not gonna be 20, I don't think, no. But he's definitely over 10. In fact, I'm sure I brought a weigh scale. He's probably about 12 pounds or so, but let me get the weigh scale out. We're gonna just weigh him up real quick. All right, let's get a weight on this guy. I've got it in pounds right now. I'm gonna weigh him right in the net. We'll take a couple pounds off for the net. And we've got 14, 1, 13, 9, 14, 4, 13. He's about 14, so let's say 12 pounds. That's what I figured. It's about a 12 pound channel cat right there, folks. How's that for a start to the day? And where's my sting nose? You're not gonna believe this. <laughs> Can you, can, you, can you even see my sting nose? Can you even see it? It's buried in there. Oh my goodness. Buried. Did he inhale that or what? I can't believe it. All right. 
I'll take my time. We'll get that hook out. We're gonna get this fish released. Oh, the hook is right there. So it's it's in there, but it's not in any. Look at that. Not in any harm's way. That's for sure. So that was an easy release. There we go, folks. <laughs> a, start, a start to my day. Now I gotta tell you, I totally did not expect this fish today, at all. In fact, I've never ever caught a channel cat at this particular spot. See you later. And they are slimy, just like every other spot. <laughs> okay, so that's gonna be the technique today. Right now I'm in 23 feet of water. You can see in the graph here, I don't know if you can see with a reflection or not, but I'm in 23 feet of water. Uh, I'm fishing here in Canada. This, uh, this red line, that's the US side. I'm fishing Canadian waters right now. And I'm in 23 feet. So there's a break on the other side. I'm gonna go back up again. I don't know if you can see where that calmer water is, but where that calmer water is, it's actually deeper there. So I'm gonna start in that calmer and then drift back into this little choppy water where it's a little shallower. But here, the technique, what I'm gonna do, I mean, like I said, I'm gonna go back up for another drift. Wow, my line is full of slime. But the method I'm gonna use here is I'm gonna cast it out and I'm gonna jig it back. So I'm gonna go back up for another drift, but I'll do one cast here just before I go. And with this technique, I'm still th same thing. I'm going to let it get to the bottom and then all I'm going to do is jig it back towards the boat. So let it get to the bottom and jig it back towards the boat. This method is very effective to cover a lot of ground but if you have a lot of snags and a lot of debris down below then you're better off not doing this because you'll end up getting snagged up. But if your bottom is a little more let's say friendly, if you've got a mud bottom or a sand bottom then you could easily jig your uh, jig and spoon back towards you and use this casting method. But if it was really rocky and a lot of structure down there, I would just fish straight up and down, put my jig and spoon about six inches off the bottom out of the snags, and then just vertically jig like I did when I opened up there. So that's gonna be the technique. I'm gonna make another run back up there and start my drift all over again. Okay. <laughs> well, like I said, I come up for another drift. Put my line down. I'm in 40 feet of water when this one hit. I'm still in this flat, calmer water. I've got the little bit of chop right behind me. And I just rigged up with another worm. And I dropped it down and I hooked into something else. And again, I don't know what I have. This time of year, it's the month of September. It's actually abnormally hot. It's gonna be like over 90 degrees today, folks. The water temperature is 76 and a half degrees, really hot water. In fact, uh, the salmon should be starting to move in here pretty, pretty soon need some colder water for them to start. I mean, they, I'm sure they've started, but I've got myself a nice walleye, folks. How's that for a walleye? There we go. Oh, he just, just come off the spoon. Look at that. Just, just came off. How's that for a nice chunky walleye? Look at that, folks. Absolutely gorgeous. I got to take a picture of this and then we're going to get them right back in. But second drift, second fish. I love, I'm loving this. And now you can see I'm starting to get into that choppy water where it's, it's about 20, 25 feet. But this way I came in about 40 feet of water. Okay, quick photo and then a release. Okay, there's a nice photo op for our Facebook and Instagram friends. We're gonna get this guy right back in again, but that's a nice chunky walleye, folks. Nice, healthy, thick fish. Beautiful. Oh, okay. And away he goes, okay. So, time to, uh, again, I've caught many a walleye with, without tipping the jigging spoon, but today I'm tipping. Would it have worked without it? Hard to say, who knows on a day like today with these conditions, really hot, stale, and, and humid. So I'm trying to entice them a bit with a little bit of worm. So I'll go back there and grab some worm and put it back on, and I'm back in the rough water. I'm gonna go work that break again. Go back up for another drift. Okay, I'm back up here in 65 feet of water. I've rigged another worm up, and I don't know if you could tell or not, but I, I didn't put any worm on the one treble. I put it on two trebles, and I left this treble um, basically free. And I'm just gonna snip that. All I need is a little piece of worm there, so I'll just snip that off. And again, because I'm fishing deep, I'm not gonna cast it. I'm just gonna drop it straight down. And I'm in 60, 62 feet right now of water. And I'm gonna come up to where those ripples are. And that's where this break is. And that last walleye, he came out of about 40 feet. So they're obviously, these fish are sitting on the break. Uh, I'm hoping they're also gonna be on the top side of the break, but we're gonna find that out. But for right now, I'm gonna keep working this break. 
straight up and down and see if I can get into another fish. I'm gonna adjust my drag because I loosened it with that last fish and I want it a little bit tighter for the hook set. So it's already starting to come up now, it's 56 feet. So I'm basically just gonna jig it up and let it flutter down and I'm gonna work along this break. And as it starts to get shallower, what I'm gonna do folks, I'm just gonna reel up my line a little bit because I don't want my, my uh, sting nose to drag the bottom. I wanna keep it off the bottom. So I'm just gonna jig it. And I like to pause for a second or two after I jig because what happens is that sting nose as it's falling uh, is fluttering down and then when it stops and you pause it's just kind of quivering there a bit and that triggers a lot of bites on the pause. I, I like the pause. So now it's coming up to 37 so I'm just gonna bring my line up and you can feel when you're on bottom. You'll feel if you're touching bottom and you just just continue to bring your line up. So that's gonna be the technique as I'm coming up to that ripply water and as soon as I get to the ripply water what I'm gonna do folks is I'm gonna start casting. So right now I'm in, I'm in, believe it or not, I'm in 25 feet of water right now. So it come right, it come right up. Now that was bottom, so I'm gonna lift it up a bit. So I didn't get anything on the break, but I'm hoping now that I'll get something on the top of the break here. So we shall see. Oh boy, I come back up for another drift. 50 feet of water, 52 feet of water. And let's see what we got this time, folks. This is unbelievable. I keep getting, I keep getting hits. They're obviously, they're on this break they're on the break and and normally I mean a lot of times they're on the they're on the top of the break too feeding but the, the bait fish must be must be lowered must be on this break because they're sitting on the break right now and look at this folks we got ourselves another walleye we got ourselves another sting nose walleye right there that that folks is a real nice eating size Look at that, out of 50 feet of water. Can you imagine? 50 feet right on the break. And you can see my worm is still still in there. Hey, no worse for wear, that worm is. Hey, isn't that a nice chunky walleye right there, folks? That's a beauty. That's a real, that's a good eater. But we're releasing fish today, so we're gonna let him go. Away you go, Mr. Wally. Okay, now I'm already in 20 feet of water, so it's just coming up to the top. I got the ripples right behind me, so I'm gonna do the cast cast and retrieve approach. Okay, I'm rigged up with another night crawler and this time I'm gonna use the whole, I'm gonna tip it with the whole night crawler. Uh, but you could use what you want. You could do a half a night crawler. You could just use a tiny little piece of night crawler if you want. Uh, but I'm gonna try a whole one right now. I've been using half up till now. And the size I'm using of the sting nose is three quarter ounce. I was thinking, I was debating to go heavier because I definitely could, but because it's calm, uh, and the, the drift is not really, really fast. I opted to go with three quarter ounce. It seems to be heavy enough. Otherwise, I could have went a little bit heavier. And I also went with the gold today, even though it's sunny, uh, I could have went with the silver because of the bright sun. However, the, we had a major storm come through here and the waters are still a little bit murky. So gold works good under murky. Silver works good under sunny. I guess I couldn't go wrong either way, but I went with the gold today and it seems to be working. So why change at this point? There we go, folks. There's one on the hit. Just as I was bringing it back, he came out of, look at that. He came into uh, 20, 25 feet of water, that one hit. So that's on the whole worm. I just doing this drift here on the top side of that that break and he hit and a good hit it was too a nice solid hit i loved it oh boy <laughs> now, it could be interesting to see what we got this time folks let's see what we're catching here today feels like a decent fish but i love it when they hit like that i just absolutely love it and he came on that whole worm you know what folks i see a nice beautiful white tip in the water and you know what that means mr wally and another another nice walleye folks oh yeah oh yeah the walleye are just eating this thing those up today tipped with that worm they're absolutely loving it oh my goodness look at this fish oh that's a nice nice walleye folks real nice walleye so it looks like the walleye bite is on today folks you never know what you're going to get out here eh that is super, 
super nice fish right there. Oh, that's a beauty. Okay, again, we're releasing fish today. That's how you release a fish. Not really, but that's fun. So, look at that worm. I'm gonna put another one on. Now, he took that whole worm. You saw I put the whole worm on that one. That guy took the whole worm. So I've been getting them on the whole worm. I've been getting them on a piece of worm. Everything seems to be working today. I'm loving it. <laughs> this one, this one, I loved it, folks. I jigged my spoon up and then I'm waiting for it to fall down and I'm looking and it's not falling down. And I said, oh man, that's a fish. And I set the hook. So what happened there is he hit it on the fall and then he kind of swam up with it. So my line never got tight. It just states that I should have paid more attention. I should have been watching my line because you'll see it kind of twitch and stop. But anyways, I set the hook regardless. And this, believe it or not, I'm in 65 feet of water right here. And this fish came right on the bottom. So it'll be very interesting to see. I think this is my deepest fish of the day. We just come up for another drift. And this is, like I say, 65 feet deep. And it is, folks, another walleye. There we go. 65 feet deep. Unbelievable. That's a deep fish right on the bottom. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, those teeth, between those teeth and that treble. <laughs> I don't want either of them in my finger. <laughs> okay, just in the side of the mouth, he took my worm. But that, folks, is another nice chunky walleye right there. That's a beauty. These are good, that's a good eating size again. But like I said, we're releasing fish today. See you later, bud. Okay, and now we're in 48 feet. So again, he was on... It looks like the bottom side of that break in 65 feet because now we're in four, now we're in 44 feet. So I'm gonna keep working this break, folks. This is unbelievable. I'm loving it out here. Oh boy, folks, am I having a day out here today? Oh my, I am having a ball out here. They are just attacking these sting nose. Again, now is it the worm that's enticing the bite on a day like today? I don't know. But and is it a walleye? I don't know. But <laughs> <laughs> might, be a, might be another channel cat, who knows. That channel cat really, really surprised me earlier. I've caught him on the jig and spoons before. I've even got him on lures, but I didn't expect to get him out this deep. And this fish came in out of also 60 feet of water, so they seem to be deeper today. I'm getting them deeper. Oh, what do we got here, folks? Could be a sheephead, who knows? But I hope to see that nice golden, what do I see? I see a nice white tipped tail. I see a nice walleye, folks. Exactly what I see. There's a nice walleye right there. Another nice chunky fish. Oh boy. Just hooked in the side of the mouth. Just in the side there. Get that out, out of there quick enough and we'll get this guy. Look at that chunk, folks. Hey, it's another nice chunky fish. Solid, healthy walleye. They are just thriving out here in Lake Ontario. Goodbye, Mr. Walleye. Wow, oh, nice fish right on the break. I'm loving it out here today, folks, loving it. But you know what, folks? Tipping your jigging spoons, it does two things. It adds natural scent, as I mentioned earlier which may or may not give you an advantage, but I like it. It adds a natural scent, it's a little extra enticer. And the other thing it does, folks, is it slows down the fall. So it changes the fall of the jigging spoon and it slows it down. So a good time to tip your jigging spoon is during, um, anytime the fish are a little tentative on the bite. So for example, if there's a cold front that come through uh, and the fish are a little more tentative, that's a good time to tip your jigging spoon. Or another good time, folks, is if you're fishing um, a body of water that's heavily fished, a lot of pressure. Well, adding a little scent just might be the little enticer that you need. But regardless, if you've never used jigging spoons, give them a try. I'm going to have myself just a phenomenal day out here today. So far, I'm off to a great start, and it's great that you've joined me. It's always a pleasure to see you. Thanks for tuning in, folks, and until next time, as always, good luck and good fishing. <laughs>